In this video, I'm going to give a quick introduction to timber framing. I'll cover some basic terminology, a numbering system, and also describe a layout method that is taught at Yes Tomorrow. If you're an experienced timber framer, or have taken a course in timber framing, you most likely already know all of this material. So please feel free to move on to the next video. So let's start with some basic terminology. These four assemblies in this frame are each called bent. And these four assemblies are called walls. Generally, a bent is designed on the short dimension of the frame, and a wall is on the long dimension. And generally, a bent would be pre-assembled on the ground and raised up. A wall is really more of a conceptual thing that doesn't really get pre-assembled. So looking at the individual timbers in a bent, the vertical timbers are called posts. Horizontal timbers are called beams. In this case, this large beam in the center of this frame is called a tie beam. And the diagonal pieces are referred to as braces. In the walls, we have the top plates, or plates, which are at the top of the wall. And we have girts, which are also horizontal timbers, or horizontal timbers in bents, I call beams. Horizontal timbers in walls, I refer to as girts. Let's take a look at a numbering system. I'm going to display the bents in this frame. And you can see a red, a green, and a blue axis line. And where they intersect is called the origin. And I have drawn this frame oriented to start at the origin. So this first bent, the one that I'm clicking in right now, I'm going to refer to as bent 1, and then go up from there. So this is bent 2, 3, and 4. If we take a look at the walls, the first wall, starting at the axis, will be wall A, and then moving back from there, wall B, C, and D. So if we show all the timbers without rafters, we can take a look and see how all of these timbers are numbered. And as I click on a timber, you'll see that its layer comes up. For instance, this is in the post layer, TF meaning timber frame. And the name of it is post 1A. What that means is it's in bent 1, but it's also in wall A. A post exists. You can see the same highlighted post is going to exist in bent 1 and also in wall A. So moving across, we have post 1B, 1C, and 1D meaning all these posts are in the number one bent, but they're also in walls A, B, C, and D. Now beams are a little different. This, these three beams are also in bent one, so they'll all start with a one, but then they have two letters after them, meaning that they're spanning from one wall to another. So this first beam spans from wall A to B, so I refer to it as beam 1AB. This middle tie beam is 1BC, and this outer beam is 1CD. So using that example, if we move to the fourth bent right here, this should be post 4A. This should be beam 4BC. This should be post 4D. Now let's take a look at some of the timbers that exist in walls. So basically we've got a girt and a plate that exists in walls. And when that's the case, I like to label them first with their wall number and then the bents that they span. So this girt is in wall A and it spans from bent one to bent two 
So I refer to it as GERT A12. This would be GERT A23 and GERT A34. Same designation for the plates. This plate is in wall A and spans two vents. So I label it plate A12 and the next plate which is scarfed in. And we'll go over scarf joints later on. This plate is referred to as plate A34. So let's just get some examples in the C wall. This girt is girt C12 spanning from vent 1 to 2. This back plate is plate C34. It's in the C wall and it's spanning vents 3 and 4. So those are the basics of the numbering system that I use. Square rule allows you to work with timbers that are out of square or up to a half inch smaller or larger than their nominal size. So when you're laying out timbers, what you will end up doing is picking one particular edge. In this case, I'm going to highlight the reference edge that is the best edge and is the, the most square edge. And you're also going to strategically position that edge so that you have basically two reference faces that attach to that edge, this being one of the reference faces and this being the other. And how you orient that is generally towards the outside of the building and generally to for the top of the wall. The reason you would reference your put your reference surface on the outside of the building is you want a nice square regular surface to attach your SIP panels or your sheathing to and the reason that you would orient another reference face on the top uh, of a beam is so that you have a nice flat surface to put your rafters on. If you have some irregularity Say, for instance, this timber, I'm going to push it in by oh, an eighth of an inch to kind of represent reality here. You can see that there's an eighth of an inch gap here, but on the outside, it's nice and flush. So the flush surfaces allow you to attach things to the outside of the building. The inside of the surface is really just for show. It is a shame that sometimes you see this on the inside. In practice, you might plane this timber down, this post down that's eight inches to match the size of the beam, and then you won't see this nasty little ledge here. So now that you know you have one reference edge, your best edge, and two reference surfaces, uh, we'll do a little bit of layout based on that. If I go to x-ray view, you can actually see some of the joinery that's inside here. And I'll also go to an exploded version of this same post beam and brace setup. And you can see the joinery here. So um, I did realize that I didn't cover uh, basic terminology of tenon and mortise. Um, this protrusion here is a tenon. And what it fits into, well, let me close that so we can see that. What it fits into is this is called a mortise. Now, there's also a little bit of joinery here where you can see that this is pushed back a little bit on each side of the mortise, and that's called a housing. The reason for that housing is we are going to set all of these timbers back to the nearest half inch less than its nominal size. So this is an eight wide and eight deep timber, an eight by eight, but we're going to push this housing back so that it's seven and a half inches measured from this reference edge. You always measure from the reference edge. Not important in SketchUp to do that. I could measure from this edge 
a half inch just as nicely because all the timbers are perfect. But in, in, in the shop, when you're dealing with a timber that's not quite eight inches, you always want to measure from the reference edge to your housing. So this is a, a known distance of seven and a half inches. So now to fit, and it's also reduced in height to seven and a half inches. The reason for that is the beam that's fitting in there is nominally eight inches, but it could be, you know, seven and three quarters. It could be eight and an eighth. So what we're going to do is reduce that down to seven and a half inches. The tenon itself is going to be seven and a half inches. In this case, four inches deep and two inches thick. But the thing I want to show here primarily is the reduction. And this basically this area here and here is referred to as a reduction so we're reducing that timber from an eight tall timber to a seven and a half timber and that's why this housing and mortise are seven and a half and not eight so that's one of the basics of square method um, another thing which is a traditional way to locate uh, your tenon, you might think initially you would put the tenon in the center of your timber, but by putting it offset to one side, you automatically know where your reference edges are. So in this case, I am two inches, let me open this up, I am two inches away from the reference here, and this tenon is also two inches away to give it a little bit of relish. From its outside surface there. So that was a quick intro to square method. Uh, there are plenty of books on the market that cover this much more in depth and I will refer to some of those in my email.